Because this is Yo something guys, that, like, because this guy plays. Try one other video. On this one, we're going to be Sorry, talking about know. seven things that private servers had wrong or things that okay. will change with the release of Classic WoW. Okay. I'm aware that other YouTubers have already covered this topic, but a lot of those videos are quite old and lots of yep. new information has actually emerged since the Classic Beta. So I think this topic is pretty interesting to cover again. Okay. These differences have varying levels of effects on the actual vanilla experience, so let's go over the most major changes that you'll be seeing in the official launch Can of the game. The first one is so. pretty big. Now, if you guys don't already know, like threat is very threat delicate in vanilla, and the speed at which your yep. raid is able to move through the dungeon is generally based on how much threat your main tank is able to pull. The more threat from your main tank, the more DPS can push, thus increasing efficiency. So the big change that's going to affect this is Where's the, the DPS increased pirate rating from bosses. There was a blue post a while back stating that boss level mobs actually have a 14% chance to parry incoming strikes. This is actually a huge factor. There's no I wish I'd have fucking known that. I was literally the dumbest, but I've told this story like 50 times. I never would attack bosses from the back. I said I look right in their fucking face and I hit them. I, I take them on face to face. I look right at them and I start hitting them. Like, I don't go behind them like a little bitch. That's for rogues. I'm a warrior. I stand right in front of the boss. And this is like a thing that I would make a point to do. I was a fucking idiot. But I would do this all the time. And I was wondering, like, man, why I never do that much D. <laughs> Why not do that much damage, dude? Keeps parrying my shit, dude. No expertise. I was a fucking vanilla, idiot. So there's no real way to bypass this at all, like in the Burning Crusade. Yeah, I was alpha. On private servers, parry chance from raid bosses has generally been below 10%. From what I yep. understand from my research, near 4 to 6%. This means your tank will be experiencing many more parries than you might be used to, reducing yep. his threat output by a decent chunk. This will be a relatively significant change for speed clearing guilds coming mm -hmm. from the private server community, but it's not the end of the world. People will still be able to blast through raids despite this fact, but it's still a big difference. Now this one is probably one of the more significant changes on this list because it literally okay. opens up a new avenue of viable speed leveling tactic that was pretty much not a thing in the private server world. He's talking about dungeon grinding. The big change is based on the new revelation of dungeon group farming that we've seen come to the forefront of the community. Yep. So groups of buddies leveling from pretty much level 15 to level 60 through just spamming dungeons back to back. The reason why this is all of a sudden a big focus from the vanilla uh, community when it basically was non-existent in the private server mm. scene is because of the revelation in respect to dungeon elite experience gain that we've seen from the classic beta. Slow kill, thank you very much for the 10 gifted community subs. I appreciate that very much, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, slow kill. So uh, this is uh, this has been a very very contentious thing in the uh, the classic WoW subreddit. They're like, oh, I have conclusive proof that the random mobs in Shadowfang Keep are doing slightly less damage than they are supposed to because if you look on private servers, they're hitting for 160, and you look on here, they're only hitting for 140. And, you know, they're very, very upset about this. Blizzard came back and they reevaluated everything and they tested it all themselves. And it turned out that the values that people were, uh, basically it came back that Classic WoW wasn't as hard as people thought that it was. That, that's what it came back as. It wasn't as hard as people thought it was. Dungeon grinding, I hope, is not the meta. I think dungeon grinding is boring and I hope they don't make this the meta of the game. Yes, I know that. Who would have thought? I know. Well, this is a big blow to their ego, right? Because these are people that have spent the last 10 years defining their ego around being able to beat raid bosses that had two mechanics. So, obviously, whenever they see that, you know, whenever this is exposed to the public, that everybody can do the same thing that they can, this is going to hurt their ego. So a normal elite mob will generally give about two times normal experience. So if you have yeah. a level 25 normal mob, it gives you, let's say, 50 experience just for sake of conversation. A 25 elite will give you 100, so two times. Double. What we've learned That's is that dungeon elites actually give you 2.5 the base experience. So that level 25 elite, if it twice was a dungeon mob, will now give you 125 experience. Okay. I found some old wiki information actually stating this, so it really surprises me that certain private servers have seemingly got this one wrong, or maybe some servers actually had it scaled properly, and the player base just never really took advantage of this like we've seen recently on Twitch. 
But regardless of that, we've this seen some really fast so leveling mad. pushes in the classic WoW beta. I, I think this some people clip. were getting to level 40 in a group in just above two days slash this play, is so which stupid, is a really dude. solid leveling time. Of course, I mean, it's probably going to slow down from level 40 to level 60, but I think it can easily be done in a five day span playing at that pace, which is a really good leveling time. Now this change is riddled in mystery. Ridiculous. We still have so much to learn in respect so to this dumb. one. It's related to combat values. Warriors the could biggest do that. red flag that many people brought up during the first portion of the classic Warriors beta was generic song? mob yeah. damage values. For people coming from the okay. private server world, they were immediately up in arms stating that damage values were off, mm -hmm. particularly in dungeons. Stating that the incoming yep. damage was way too low and dungeons were much more easy than they had expected or that they thought was Blizz like. Yep. When you've been playing private servers for years, you get a feel for how it is, for the difficulty level. When people stepped foot into the beta, it immediately felt different in dungeons and felt way too easy. Which is surprising because most people who hate on the private server community tend to view those servers as being easy and inaccurate. Many. They are easy and they are inaccurate. But that's because Classic was easy. They're, they're both easy. Like, I, I mean, come on. Uh, I, I'm not sure what, what they're expecting to see happen. But yeah, I mean, they're, they're already pretty easy. Stop saying that. The game was a joke, okay? Uh, it, it's a joke then. It was a joke now. It's even more of a joke now because people are better at it. Okay, guys? Uh, that's really all there is to it stating that private server players will get challenged by the actual vanilla experience. But what we saw here was actually quite the opposite. It seemed that many private servers had actually overtuned things. I mean, I can vouch for that personally, and I feel yep. like I remember the Nostalrius team stating that they specifically did overtune certain aspects of the game to increase the difficulty level to some something that they felt was more reasonable, since they yep. felt certain things were too easy. Although there's another end to this topic where it's actually possible that mob values in raids are actually different from what we know in the private server world. Specifically for bosses, we don't actually know the resistance numbers, armor numbers, and in general the stat line and scaling for each boss in a raid. This is a huge factor. Every boss in vanilla has their own unique values. Shazra, for example, the boss in Molten Core has very high arcane resistance. Other bosses have fire resistance, shadow resistance, frost, nature, you name it. Different armor values as well. And all of this information has- They used to do this shit where like, they make it to where like fire bosses, wasn't it like certain fire bosses were immune to fire damage? Uh, I I'm trying to remember how all this stuff used to work. Was that the case? Yeah, so like, and, and this kind of made sense to me. Is like, like imagine you have like a pool and you throw an ice cube in a pool. Pretend the ice cube's a frost bolt. I don't know, it seems like that's not really gonna do much to the pool. Like, the ice, the ice cube is gonna melt, it's just gonna be part of the pool, it's not gonna matter. You know, I, I, I kind of like that whenever you were able, you had to like pick certain specs to fight against bosses that were immune to certain kinds of damage. But I know why they got rid of it too. Always been on Blizzard's end. So private server devs have operated What's fire gonna do? Bro, respect the frost. I think through the process of reverse engineering based on all the information and the boss kill videos that we have yep. access to and just theory crafting data in general from back in 2006 vanilla, it's relatively accurate, but who knows, there still might be some major differences that we're completely unaware of. Next one is widely known, but it's gotta be on the list, boys. It's melee leeway. So leeway, I've explained so many times on this channel before, is the extra buffer range that melee classes get when chasing a moving target yep. increasing the range of hitbox interactions significantly especially on torrents initially Look the at that hit. was in a total uproar about this the outcry was palpable from the private server pvp community but it seems that melee there were dozens of people that were upset about it literally probably m probably at least multiple dozens of people that were upset about this issue uh most other people don't really give a shit uh, it doesn't i don't really think it's gonna be a big thing like, here's the way that I look at Leeway. Is Leeway going to help me kill a Frost Mage? No. No, it's not. Leeway is, in fact, Blizz like. I made a video yep. about it about a month ago, and it seems from some of the footage that I found from original PvP videos that it was actually part of the game. This is something that's going to affect PvP yep. in a major way. Melee classes just got a massive buff 
from what we know in the private it should stay in the game so Absolutely. warriors are now extendo arm warriors cock smacking you with their long schlong all the way from hong kong hey. his uncle ruckus will get you with that melee leeway hey, the dude, there it is getting the short end of the stick like we're seeing it in the classic wild WoW beta is the mage so mages specifically when they're trying to solo farm aoe grind yep. in their leveling process now on private servers, mages are by far the best solo levelers available. They can yep. pretty much get to, from one to level 60 in two days and some change slash played. But I'm pretty sure on the classic WoW beta, that hunters are gonna regain the throne of the best solo levelers in the game. But yeah, Melee Leeway actually last week was confirmed by Blizzard to be working as expected. It's the new norm, the cows are happy, get used to it. Now this, like oh, yeah. Melee Leeway, again is a massive change and throws off the world PvP 1v1 power hierarchy that we know from private servers quite a bit. This one affects me as well in phase 1-2 to two and my plans for the first two phases. I'm not thrilled about it, but I'm also not a defeatist about it. So the biggest change that we're seeing is actually being applied to hunters specifically and how traps interact. Thank God. The first one is that scattershot and freezing trap actually share DR. So no more endless full scatter into a full trap over and over again, cycled back to back Thank for God. infinite kiting potential on a hunter. Yeah. Hunters now are going to have to time and coordinate their traps a little bit better if they want to get a full one without using scatter to ensure the trap's success. Okay. There's also a bit of a delay on the actual trap being triggered once it's been activated or once it's been walked over. That means warriors can now charge through hunter traps without being affected by the actual trigger. I've also oh, heard little really? anecdotes of rogues sprinting oh, over them, yeah. but I'm not exactly sure if that's going to reliably Is that happen. true? I think that may have just been server lag that, you know, mm. had something to do with server lag from back in 2006. Beautiful. And there's also this little mechanic with hunter traps that reduces the activation range of the trap against stealth targets. So this could actually affect rogues when trying to reopen on a hunter from stealth. Of course, only if flare isn't activated. It's pretty situational, but it's still a factor, I guess. And once again, another major one. If you came from private servers, you know how most top guilds revolve their raid prep around the collection of world buffs. So you'll have two groups that'll run DM North tribute runs, get 40 people through those two DM IDs, get all the buffs on all yep. 40 people, maybe like 45 minutes before the raid actually starts. Then you'll go to Orgrimmar and collect uh, your Rallying Cry of the Dragon Slayer. So you'll pop an Onyxia head or Nefarian head. Maybe pop a War Chief's blessing. Seems a little bit crazy to me. Seems a little bit crazy to me that uh, these buffs, it probably takes longer to organize the world buffs than it does to do the raid. Y y you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's kind of crazy. I mean, whoa, woo. That's the point? Yeah, I know. Uh, it's still, it's kind of funny. A and also, like, the thing with the world buffs and everything is that like on a PvP server, bro, like if I could get into a raid with the Onyxia head, like I'd be happy. There's no way that even that shit's gonna happen. Like there's gonna be so many people fucking ready to kill me. And, and just anybody, right? I mean, it's just, it's what's gonna happen all the time. Like if I ever wanted to take it super seriously, I'd just do it on a PvE server and then like do the, uh, the world buffs and everything. But I don't really care that much about it one way or another. Go to Thunder Bluff and get the Dark Moon Fair buff. Buffs can be dispelled. And then people are maybe starting to head out to yeah. Fellwood and collecting Songflower Serenade. And right before you guys head to Raid, you might also go to Stranglethorn Vale and get Hakkar's Heart Buff or the Spirit of Zandalar. Then head and speed clear through pretty much as much as you can with those buffs. This is how my guild would do it. I mean, That's we would insane. get a it's full a lot of stuff. row of world buffs across the entire raid, flasks and... Cons I think this is one thing that, like, the bosses in Vanilla WoW they're they're easy right they're they are they're easy but whenever you add in all of these different buffs they're a joke so whenever people are watching these speed clearing videos you have to always think about it in the context of these are people that have every world buff imaginable and, and we're just looking at some of the world buffs here like, these are things that make you just do 10% more damage. Do they give you 5% more critical strike chance? I mean, they're massively great. And if you put all those together, like, your damage is basically going to double. So I, I think that should definitely be taken into consideration. Consumables. 
everything and then clear molten core in basically 30 minutes yeah. blast through black wing lair in less than an hour and then full clear aq40 with the two hours at least left double in yeah raid probably. Night. i mean world buffs enabled this it's possible yeah. to do it without them but it would slow you down significantly obviously just from a math perspective so world buffs actually have a cooldown in classic well you can only pop rallying cry of the dragon slayer once every two hours and war chief's blessing you can only pop once every 12 hours wow part of a car i'm not necessarily sure if it has a cooldown off the pop but still that's a pretty big factor with the two aforementioned buffs this means guilds will have to actually communicate if they plan on popping heads the same day so that everyone can get the buff before raid it's a bit of an obstacle but it doesn't necessarily neutralize world buffs entirely it's just a little bit of a factor that's going to make it a bit more of a pain to attain and of course maybe random onyxia pugs that may have popped ahead earlier and kind of ruined your ability to get the buff I don't think it's too big of a deal because you don't actually need a whole row of world buffs. I mean, just getting three or four of them is generally enough for most purposes, but world buffs will definitely still be a major factor in raiding without a doubt, just like they were back in original vanilla. Now this- I don't remember, like, see, this is the thing. Like the only time I ever remember world buffs, be, buffs, buffs, I don't know, world buffs being used in raiding was like my guild told me that they went back and they got all of the world buffs to do Lotheb in uh in in nax ramus but before then uh, I, I don't remember any of that like i i don't remember them talking about that at all like maybe you do that a little bit uh show me your world buffs you show me yours first we use them for veil strats yeah i mean like i think you probably use world buffs for like like bosses that are kind of like a wall and uh like veil or like crow magus or like lothar or something like that it, it does kind of make sense in, in that way i imagine that Ani ones are easy to get. Well, the issue isn't really that the buffs are easy to get. Like, the buffs are easy to get. The problem with world buffs is the fact that whenever you're doing world buffs, that means that you have to fucking deal with getting everybody in your raid over to the raid entrance without having them killed. And on a PvP server, it's like you think about this. Ganking somebody else, you're basically a happiness vampire. The madder they are, the happier you are. So, if you're ganking somebody with full world buffs, you know that person just had a fucked up day. There was one day, one time, I think this was like Mr. Pandaria, where I killed someone with the Elixir of Ancient Knowledge. And that's like the potion that takes forever to farm off of this Kang guy. And it was, just, it was very, very annoying to farm beside him. And I killed him, and I was so happy because I knew that he was so mad. And this is the case for a lot of things. And I missed it. I was going to spend it. Yeah, they overturned it. Blizzard is, uh, they did a great job. Um, Blizzard customer support did amazing. And uh, I do want to actually say that. Yeah, again. Uh, but the point is the same. Uh, do you lack empathy? Yeah, of course. Of course I do. Yeah, I'm not a very empathetic person. But it's really fucking funny to kill somebody whenever they have their buffs on. Oh. I, it's a game too. If people can get mad about that, it's a fucking game. This one isn't necessarily related to gameplay, but it's a massive difference from the private server experience and even original vanilla back in 2006. This is a newer dynamic in modern huh. game player based moderation that we see today. It's in game reporting. So if you played on private servers, there's not really much speech policing going on, just yep. like back in vanilla. People are free to express themselves, make offensive jokes, largely without repercussion. That will not be the case in Classic WoW. There's going to be heavy policing on your behavior. Offensive name, and you probably won't last more than 20 minutes if you type anything in general chat even yep. once. You'll be logged off and forced to rename your character. Yep. Offensive guild name? Woo 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 woo! Not here, boy. You better change that guild name to Mickey Mouse Fanboy Club. Call someone. <laughs> Three day ban with a chat restriction. Oh, when it's that over. was DuckTales. So you better pucker up for Daddy I Blizzard see. to set you straight. No quote-unquote bad words world of warcraft is now a that was clever um i'm actually pretty certain they probably didn't even mean that to be like the correlation but still like yeah so in-game reporting i don't like in-game reporting i think that if you want to report somebody this is e even in like a current wow like the the problem with in-game reporting is the fact that there are automated systems if there were no automated systems then it wouldn't matter but the fact that there are automated systems, then I really do feel like in-game reporting should not have a place in the game. Uh, the right-click report, 
in general for classic wow i think that if somebody annoys you enough that you want to report them you should have to actually go through and fill out a ticket because the, it's like the chances are like so let's say somebody pisses you off and you can just right click report their name you're going to probably do that but if you have to go through and talk to customer support go through a fucking clicking portal from all of these different things fill out a forum and all of this other bullshit it's just not going to happen right so your reports go from like let's say a hundred reports to like seven because those are the only seven people that are actually butthurt or mad enough to actually go through the entire reporting process nobody else gives a shit safe space oh and no supporting honald glorf either how dare you sir all right guys so there was a couple repeats from other videos a couple repeats from some videos that i've made in the yeah. past but this is a compiled video with all of the most major changes in my mind these to me seem to be the changes that are going to actually affect the classic experience to the greatest degree and of course i stayed away from layering and all that other stuff and yeah. focus more on mechanics these are the ones that i'm aware of but there's probably more there's definitely more i'm super curious about this topic i'm honestly always thinking about it so if you guys know of anything that i'm unaware of please drop it in the comment section there's going to be some changes to what we've sort of been accustomed to over the last couple of years of playing on unofficial servers good or bad i'm just excited to finally step foot in vanilla once again in an official sense. Hopefully you guys are as excited as I am. It's going to be awesome regardless. I'm going to be streaming on Twitch once the game actually releases. So if you guys want to hang is. out and chat, you know, shoot the shit a little bit. There it follow is. Follow me on Twitch, boys. If you want to support my channel for more content like this, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Of course, you know the drill. Join the Discord, of course. It's been booming lately. We've got some spicy banter going in there pretty much all day, every day. Hope to see you guys there. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the other side. Peace. I'm really curious to see what the uh, what the comments are going to be in this video. Uh, let's see what they have to say about it. Um, I personally hate world buffs. I think it's just too much of a hassle to get them, and it results in a big stomp of all the raids. Yeah, I can see why people would think that. Uh, I actually prefer to remove the major world buffs on entering a raid. Uh, easier progression than private servers. They should really make world buffs not work in raids. Well, hey, I would agree, except for I want classic WoW. Uh, let's see. Damn, I'm a fresh new sub here. Damn, you have one of the best classic contents out there. Um, this is mostly a comment about his video. Uh, let's see here. Here's my quality content. Uh, let's see. Banned from wrong guild name. Fat kids can't LOS. We had fat kids. There were so many fucking bad guild names that I used to have. Like, I think, like, we had... So the first guild name I ever made was called Fuck What You Think. It was Zach and I, like, Mikkel Reevy and I. We came up with this guild name, and we thought we were really funny because, like, we were the same people that we would say, well, like, sitting, because like, we'd be sitting, like, one of us would be right here, the other one would be, like, right there, like, facing, like, that way, right? And we'd be like, hey, Zach, you want to do the... You want to do the Blackmore ass? <laughs> and then Zach would be like... You mean uh, the black more ass? <laughs> and we'd just be sitting there laughing this shit up like two big dumb fucking idiots sitting in the room on summer vacation thinking that we're the funniest dudes in the whole world. And, you know, the yeah, the implication, hey, it's really, really funny. But uh, this was this was kind of a while ago. And so, like, yeah, this was our first guild name that we made. And uh, we got that one reported, too. Uh, come on or chess. I mean, there's a million of them, right? And I, I like my, my guild name I, I made was, uh, Helen Keller versus traffic. And, uh, that one got su uh, suspended and, uh, Blizzard never renamed my guild. They just call it El Banco's guild. They, they won't do it. They, they, they stopped, they stopped allowing me to re rename my guilds. So, uh, they just put it El Banco's guild. I wanted them to rename it to Asmongold fan club. And I think just out of spite, they wouldn't do it.